years, a, 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 the discovery time that uh, Netflix has provided for you, and that's probably a better solution than grading it your own way, like I've done. But uh, I, I just want to know the emphasis whatsoever to anything. So this is the same, it scans with the CD extension for NAV Eureka annotations and in the uh, Postman's record it registers rather than doing this WebSocket uh, call. I just use the, the, uh, the uh, text rest client API and do a post to Eureka and that is, according to their protocol, is pretty documented on, on the web. Uh, I've sent them my I get an ID and it's an instance ID and I'm registered. And also, I, the same thing here, I set a timer every 10 seconds uh, and just stop to do an update with a put. And when it's uh, undeployed, I do a delete. And that, that is how their uh, API is successful. And then I can end up in my application uh, in, in the exact same way as for a Eureka client, I define where is the, the service URL for, for Eureka? And to add mine small uh, Eureka dependency. And in my application config, I add enable Eureka client. And also have application name JDAVES. I just build it and run it. And you see, uh, uh, now I, I, I find both the, the uh, enable the Eureka client annotation and the uh, Snoop client uh, annotation. So I'm actually registering to both services, but that's because I'm uh, both annotations. And, and I do a put every 10 seconds. And if you look at Eureka now, you can see that this demo is also registered. It, it doesn't have all the functionality that comes with the Spring Boot and, and the, the Eureka uh, Spring Cloud stuff, but it's there and it's easy to, to implement. And all I did was create a simple REST client, and that means you're not actually limited to a Java-based application, it's REST, you can do whatever. So if you have a node microservice, you can do that or whatever. So, let's go back to the other list. Take away the memory. So, what I did here was to uh, it's working. to simply annotate. Uh, I'll go back a couple of slides. It's a bit faster. So what I did was uh, simply to have my uh, discovery service, uh, the first application, and I had some Spring Boot applications, I uh, used an Eureka client. Then I, I wanted to use a Java E uh, version of it, and I created my own, like enabled Snoop client, uh, my proprietary annotation. And then the third thing I did was to create a Java E application so that could use an enabled Eureka client and register to Eureka and I also had the, the Spring Boot application and if time then I could have uh, some other application and then you can have actually microservices programmed in, in whatever language you want and, and be uh, handled by the same uh, discovery management. To sum up a little bit, DevOps is first of all an, a culture and it's, it's an organizational thing and it needs to, uh, to, to be cultivated in your organization and not all organizations are actually ready for it. So you need to think of, is my 
organization ready for DevOps or not before you start doing it without thinking. The organizational thing affects technology. It affects how you think about technology and you probably see that if you are a real DevOps shop, you end up uh, with a very modular architecture and, and most often you end up with microservices. And whether that's a good thing or not, that depends on, on your uh, use case. You need to choose your level of uh, abstraction. Like I said, uh, show these layers. Is it uh, where do I want to have the base for my development? And as a Java DE developer, I'm kind of favored the way that you have a container that provides all the services that it needs for you. They are verified and they work. And if you're uh, worried about uh, uh, startup times, deployment times, and, and uh, being able to fire up uh, more instances easy, then look at some kind of containerization uh, mechanism on top of it, like Docker. Like I started the, the container in, in uh, started Wi-Fi in Docker here, and it's actually much faster than starting up a Spring Boot application because it's much less bootstrapping involved. Containers are a good thing. If you deploy into a Java e container, you get a lot for free, and you can focus on the functionality and get the functionality right. And if you get any bugs, it's your own code and it's about functionality. It's not that you have done the plumbing wrong. Then. Because that is what the container is there for. And then you get stability. Java E today is lean and simple. So remember how easy it is to create an EJB today. If you have experienced uh, Java E in the days when it was called Java J2E and remember the hassle of EJB is there, that's not the way the world is anymore. Java E is now leaner and simpler and it's easier to use and it has a, a very uh, confirmed uh, API across. You want to keep the experts in the organization and you want to keep the experts doing what they're good at. Operations guys should be good at configuring your system and they can configure your application server to run as good as they want and they can containerize it that or, or virtualize it or do whatever they want to do with, with it. But let them do what they're good at and don't try to get the developers to do the configuration for you. And the other way, the way around, you don't want the operations guy to go in and code functionality. So what you want to do is to have DevOps is to get the both parties to want the same thing, and that is change and stability, and you want to do it with Java E. And if you want to have a look at the source code I showed here today, you can find it on my GitHub. The uh, Docker images I was using uh, is in Docker Hub. Uh, you can also find them in the Docker files in, in my GitHub. So that's what I had today, and I thank you very much for listening, and I uh, hope you bear with me that the code demo maybe didn't match the abstract of this presentation very much, but I hope you enjoyed it, and uh, if you have any questions, and, uh, thank you, and uh, I'll be around uh, for as long as there's food, um, so <laughs> feel free to contact me and, and uh, any questions, comments. Anything. And uh, talking about food, it's uh, coffee time and it's much of bread. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, we're Jay Days, and today we're sponsored to thank Eva for a great presentation. And we'll talk about it.